Hey gang, welcome back to Ski Play Live TV. I am Jill and I got my Ford Transit Connect camper van back from Aaron at Off Highway Van. Funny story, I was posting some tales of my, uh, with the other people that were helping me with my camper van build and Aaron responded on Instagram and sent me a private message and we got to talking and I brought my van down to him and we talked about the things that we needed. Well, he got into the van and discovered that my electrical system was one giant rat's nest and it took him three days to fix everything up. I worked with Renogy Solar and I got four 100 watt 12 volt solar panels and an MPPT controller, a 2000 watt inverter, three 100 amp hour deep cycle Renogy batteries and one 200 amp hour deep cycle Renogy battery, meaning that I have 500 amp hours of batteries. When I called up to see what I would need, that's what they told me. What do I know? I just said I have computers to charge, cell phones to charge, blow dryer, microwave, pump for the sink, and an electric refrigerator, and that's what they calculated it out. I tell you, make sure you do your own calculations because when you listen to Aaron, you will know that I did complete overkill. I took all of your great hardware and I put it together in a very professional way because you've got 500 amp hours of Renogy batteries, which are very nice. Um, which is probably overkill for your van, but they're great. <laughs> How um, long will that last me? If I had 500 could, amp hours? I think you could run the microwave for about two days. Straight. And yeah, I think it would just run. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of juice. But um, if we had two laptops, two cell phones charging, and... Uh, and it was raining. And it was raining. Then what do you think? It'd still go for a week. Just, it's probably 2x at least what it needs to be. It's, it's good. It's good to have. It's just, it's a lot. Gotcha. Um, so you've got a lot of a lot of capacity. Okay. Um, but it doesn't really take up a lot of room, does it? Because no. of what you've done. No, we we got the batteries all under the the seat on the other side, and they're pretty compact and out of place, uh, and they're low, so they don't they don't hurt the uh, stability of the vehicle. They're nice okay. And low, so. so show us how good. the whole system works. Okay. So on this side, all underneath the camping stove seat box, um, all five of them. One of them makes it all the way up underneath the driver's seat, uh, tucked in the floor pan. The electronic compartment is all here, easily accessible. A lift out panel. So that you can see everything that you need uh, and have access to it in one place. The main components are your inverter, your Renogy solar controller, and your charge solenoid, your isolator solenoid, um, and then your main battery cutoff. So, the thing that we want to make sure is that if you're going to leave the vehicle for a long time, you know, park for a couple of weeks, you want to be able to disconnect everything off the system so that the batteries don't run dead. So to do that, we put this big battery cutoff switch in. Boom. The lights go out. Everything goes out. That's just the uh, energy shutting down. And you key it back on, and now the, everything is connected again. Um, that includes even disconnecting your solar from the batteries. That's Every, the batteries connect through that, so everything else is isolated from the batteries there. Um, what that means is if you're outside and the solar's working and you key it off, you'll still have power to some of your electronics. It'll probably even still run your interior lights just directly from the solar. It won't be using the batteries. It won't be storing it in the batteries. So if we turn that off, it if would If you turn that. that off, it'll probably still power your lights okay. because it's solar direct to uh, some of your other electronics. So if it was a sunny day, we would turn that off? No. I leave okay. it on all the time. That's just for long term or if you're going to work on the batteries. If you're going to park the vehicle, bam, shut it off um, to keep the batteries from being drawn down by any little load that happens to be in there. What are the little loads that might still draw from it if, if you everything forgot to was turn off? this off? Okay. Um, you left the inverter on by mistake, that type of thing. What am I supposed to do with the inverter? Am I supposed to turn it off all the time? Or? Yeah. So the inverter is, think of it as like uh, leaving your TV on in standby mode. It's, you know, if you're not watching your TV, you turn it all the way off. But if it's, you know, it, and that's new TVs all go to sleep now because of that. They, they, even if it's not powering your microwave or anything else, your outlets in the back, um, it draws power. It draws 
one, two, three amps. I didn't check this one in particular, but we can, you know, we Good they, they generally just sitting there idling, being ready to provide 110 power, AC power, they draw a bunch of juice. So you don't want to use them. They're, that will draw more than your lights just sitting there idling. Okay. So you leave it off. This is your on off switch, your remote. Oh, okay. You leave the, the hard switch, there's an on off switch on this thing. You leave that in the on position and you turn this thing on and off with the remote on. That's apparently on already. Or off. You hear a chirp to go off. There's not a good indicator on it, but you can look at your LED on your uh, microwave and see that it's on. Because that's the only visual indicator that there's power, 110 power or something or other. But it's worth keeping this uh, handy and I'm turning it off. How do I read all of this stuff? Like, how do I make sure that everything is working properly? Well, the reason that I buried it is because, under this floorboard, is because you shouldn't have to. Um, you've got a lot of solar and a lot of capacity, so there's not any real reason to pay particularly close attention to your, uh, your system. It should just work. Um, the thing that you can read, there's two, two things down here that are important. Um, one is your solar controller. Um, this is going to be on all the time. Whenever there's battery power to it or solar power to it, it'll, it'll be on. And it's, it defaults to, this is your battery voltage. Um, and it shows that it's coming from the panels to your batteries. Um, and that's the, just the voltage. If you scroll, um, that's your panel voltage. So even in here, inside, just with the little overhead lights, the panels are 13 volts. Um, this shows how much amps, A, is coming into your batteries from the solar. Well, since we're inside, it's got a little voltage, but it's not enough to put out any power. So it's not charging your batteries at all. The zero amps. That, and you can see the panel, the display, panel to battery. Okay. Um, batteries at 100 percent. 100% because it's been sitting out in the sun all day. Okay. Um, and then just plain battery voltage, 13.3, which is back to the beginning of the screen. Um, this also shows how much the batteries are discharging to the load, but that is a feature we're not using on this controller, so that doesn't really mean anything here. Okay. Um, we discharge all of our systems through, uh, not through this controller, we discharge them through uh, the distribution channel uh, elsewhere. So this does not give you an accurate reading of, um, this isn't capable of powering your energy unit, basically. It's, this will draw more than that's capable of handling, so we don't run all the controls through there. Okay, so you say the 13 volts, what does that mean to me? Like, as a layperson. The, the problem with using voltage as an indicator of how much battery is going, it, it just doesn't work very well. It's not a good correlation. 13.1 could be 60% battery, and 13.3 could be 100% battery. So it's like, with a couple tenths on the voltage, it could be a huge difference in the amount of battery that's available. So what we want to look at is the, the percentage that, that your uh, rover shows, so 100%. Um, there are also aftermarket battery monitors that basically you put in the capacity of the battery and it adds up all the loads that have gone on and subtracts off of, of theoretical full and then puts it back in as the solar puts into it and you know that's an option we can have we can put into this but because you have so much capacity and good solar um, I don't think it's really a key to to monitor you're not going to be in trouble um, and if you start running you know if you're out camping for a week and you have had some issues it's easy enough to add a battery monitor to give yourself a little more control but um, I don't think you're gonna find that as any so you don't think that I should watch that and be like oh my god I'm at 60% no. no okay I wouldn't okay if, you, if, if it's rained for two days and you've been camping in it um, and you want to have a look at it um, I would pull it up and look and you also have this little monitor here and this is what they call a shunt and this is what I was talking about a, a real battery monitor and you had four of them installed earlier one on every one of your loads that's overkill um, that none of them have enough capacity to power to, to monitor your inverter so that's the the main issue these are a nice little unit but they're only really good for like lights and you know some small loads they won't run you can't run all the power through this unit so when you turn on the inverter, this doesn't show that it's drawing anything because it's not monitoring the inverter. It's so, monitoring everything but the inverter. Just the inverter it will draw well, well over 100 amps, and that's only rated for 100 amps. This, this is going to tell you if there's a draw all the time, 
Um, and so you had all those things in there before, and there was a huge draw. It was wired wrong, and there was a huge draw all the time, and you still didn't know because it wasn't, they weren't showing Yeah, I didn't know where it was right? going it from. Didn't, yeah, it wasn't showing that because it was just wired badly. So the system is wired correctly now. Um, what this is going to show you is that, let's just say we turn the lights off. I don't know if it, your camera's still picking it up, but yeah. the draw went down to, uh, out is 0.00. .00. You probably can't see it. We'll turn it back on. Yeah. But you'll see it, the current comes from 0 up to 0.23. That's... Yeah. To how much one light is drawing. If you switch it to both of them being on, it goes up to 0.4 something, right? 0.45. So it's really accurate about telling you what's drawing. So if I only had 200 amp hours instead of 500 amp hours, then I would have to pay attention. And all these numbers don't really make sense to me. Is there a place to go so, to so find all that out? Renogy has some pretty good information online. I just think the problem is people don't necessarily forecast their loads very well. Um, so like you have a refrigerator that's going to go in here right. and that refrigerator is usually people's biggest draw because it runs a lot of the time especially on a hot day um, and a refrigerator will draw like five amps okay and so you have 500 amp hours of batteries so your refrigerator can run for a hundred hours because you have 500 um, theoretically on a so, rainy day on a rainy right. day so 500 hours or you know a uh, hundred hours so basically you've got whatever say four days or something like that worth of worth of capability just on the just fridge. on the yeah. just uh, just if it's running the fridge but your fridge won't run all the time that's when it's actually running a compressor and whatnot right. your fridge will probably run 30 percent of the time if that if you're using it if you're not not using it it's maybe 10 percent of the time so again that's going to be it'll run your refrigerator this amount of batteries will run your refrigerator for oh, probably a week with no other usage i did complete overkill however it's not bad and now i won't ever have to worry about running down on my batteries.